Hi there, my name is Jacob and I'm an environment artist for Quixel at Epic Games. This is the second part of our extensive tutorial series about our medieval village demo project. After going over initial setup and block out for our project in the previous tutorial, we will now look at adding houses to our scene. Specifically, we'll go over how exactly we utilized pre-existing scan data along with Unreal Engine's powerful new Geo tools and Quixel Mixer to create unique, setting-appropriate houses and structures. Let's quickly remind ourselves that the broad vision for this project was that of a rundown, dirty and disheveled fantasy-esque village with really only a few small huts and housings. The general idea was based from the get-go on our modular medieval scans. However, it was very apparent that these modular scans, at least out of the box, were only really suited for a cleaner Tudor-era style, not exactly in line with what we wanted to achieve. Knowing this, we were presented with a couple of options, for example going the route of building certain extensions and modular pieces from scratch. However, especially when these pieces appear next to and in context of scanned assets, they require special attention and care, so it could have been rather time consuming to achieve the same level of quality and visual fidelity by hand. Furthermore, the from scratch approach would usually involve a wide array of different DCCs and interconnected workflows from high poly blockout to sculpting to low poly creation, then UV layout and a complete texturing pass, usually including the creation of a rather extensive set of smart materials to allow for visual consistency between assets. A different approach would be to use the power of existing scan data to repurpose 3D assets and surfaces that share the same level of detail from the get-go. This could, for instance, be done entirely in a DCC of your choice, be that Maya, 3ds Max, Blender or similar. With the introduction of more capable geometry tools to Unreal Engine 4.26, we decided to create all of our building extensions directly in Engine. This, combined with the extensive Megascans library and ecosystem, can be an extremely powerful method for crafting unique and custom assets that fit perfectly into the visual style of pre-existing scan data, allowing you to adapt and expand the visual language of a project all without leaving the engine. All of the examples we've been showing here should give you a good idea of what exactly we were able to achieve with this approach. Our houses have been exclusively constructed directly in Engine, only using Megascan's assets available in our library such as wooden boards, branches and even just two-dimensional surface and atlas scans. So without any further ado, let's jump into a bit more detail to break this down step by step. We started off by populating a new empty level with a few of our medieval scans and created a clean slate blueprint, if you will, of the general layout we wanted our initial building to have. This served as our construction level and we repeated this process for pretty much all of our additional houses down the line. Once we had established our possibilities using only pre-existing modular scans, we then had a better understanding of what pieces we were actually missing to achieve our visual goal. For instance, we can now clearly see that using only our modular pieces, our houses lack interesting variants in positive silhouette. Everything is composed of right angle boxes and straight surfaces. Especially when breaking out of a rectangular base shape, connecting pieces with our stock scans can become a bit tricky. Now, to combat this, we can literally start constructing additive pieces by arranging individual boards and planks. The GeoTools sculpting, deforming, displacing and cutting tools come in extremely handy. Straight in Engine, we are able to combine and cut assets to size, creating new variations. These tools can work very cleanly, preserving your UVs and normals even under extreme deformations, protecting the high fidelity of our scan data. Not only are we able to stay in engine, we also gain the major benefit of having multiples of the same meshes sharing the same UVs and textures, resulting in very high textile density without needing to rely on expensive 4K textures. 
Reusing the same base scans over and over again also means that we can reuse the same few texture sets. My favorite tools during this stage are the Space Deform to Bend and Twist Assets, the Sculpting Tools which allow me to precisely line assets, and last but not least, the Slice Tool, making it very easy to clean up any unwanted geometry. Once we are happy with an extension, we can now get rid of unwanted geometry and prepare the new asset for our weathering process. You know, when simply sticking together assets, one is often left with telltale signs of quote-unquote game visuals, so unnatural intersections where two assets were clearly just stuck together. So while we have the immense benefit of achieving extremely high taxel density by having multiples of individual assets that now share overlapped UVs, we want to take this a step further. To unify the entire assets, we created a second UV channel to make sure that we can create unique texture data on the previously wildly overlapping UV islands. We decided to do this in a separate DCC, but with further progress around this toolset, I am sure that down the line it will be a good option to do this natively in Unreal Engine. Once we've established our unique UV data, we do a quick bake, giving us ambient occlusion, convexity, concavity and other directional maps. Using these maps, I created a Mask Smart Material Mixer, allowing me to create unique RGB weathering masks for each asset, containing information for overall grime, wetness and moss or lichen growth. This single composite map is then simply plugged into an instance of the master material I built for this purpose, allowing me to individually address all three effects, both globally using global parameter collections and on a per instance basis. Now let's take a peek at our material and use this opportunity to quickly explain why exactly we want to have two UV channels. While we apply all of our asset-specific texture data on the first UV channel, which has a bunch of overlapping UVs, the second UV channel, where all previously overlapped UVs are laid out next to each other, now allows us to create texture data that treats the combined objects as its own unique asset, rather than a loose assembly of assets. This in turn allows us to add weathering masks unique to one assembly, while still keeping all the benefits from using shared UVs for our main textures. A similar workflow is used for the existing scanned modular pieces, for which I created another RGB smart mask in Mixer. When building your own masks, I'd encourage you to browse through the smart materials that ship with Quixel Mixer to get inspired by the different approaches taken for various weathering effects. After these steps, we now have a unique and visually fitting extension to our modular pieces that perfectly suits our intended visual language. Following the same exact steps, we created a small set of semi-modular assets that pretty much allowed us to customize our existing building blocks to our liking with minimal interference from other DCCs. To make work a bit cleaner and not contaminate our main level with unnecessary files, I'll simply duplicate this construction level for each new house I'm building so that we are left with a list of unique standalone levels from which we'll be able to pull our assets. This workflow even allows you to create structures and buildings completely from scratch. Our forge or smithy, for example, is 100% constructed from pre-existing Megascans assets, all edited and combined directly in Unreal Engine to ensure that we are able to create an open and interesting building. Last but not least, we can finally populate our blockout level with our final buildings, allowing us to proceed to the next steps. Now, thank you all so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed it. We'll go on to cover how we tackled the roofs and small additional pieces for the houses in the next tutorials, so make sure to advance to the next part. You'll find all tutorials of this series listed in the description below. Also, please feel free to drop your questions or thoughts into the comments and, as always, I can't wait to see you in the next one.